All right, so I want to take a moment and go back to the burning steps here. And what I want to do is the smoldering ruins of Thorazen and Overmaster Pyron, both of which I believe are just open world quests. So for the smoldering ruins of Thorazen, we have to go to the Thorazen ruins, which we are at right now. And we have to recover information from the Thorazen relics. Don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but I'm assuming there is some sort of pickup that I can just go and grab. Uh, these mobs also, by the way, these War Reavers, apparently they are immune to both my fear as well as my drain life. So I can't drain life them, and that really makes them a lot harder. Like, I've, I've grown so accustomed now to be able to use drain life to just be, you know, an absolute monster. But these guys, they're really tough. I don't know what I'm looking for specifically. Maybe I'm looking for a drop of some kind, or maybe there's like an open world pickup I can grab. But I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll have to find something. So they're actually these things. These um, like rock looking things on the floor. However, these guys are patrolling and they're very strong. Especially with me currently having the uh, resurrection sickness. So I'm super weak. I'm just trying to like sneak in here and see if I can get these things done. There's another one up there and I really want to go grab it. But this guy might make my life hell if I try to do so. Also, these two guys are down there. So, oh boy. Like I'm playing a horror game right now, guys, and it is an experience, but I will push forward. We will get this quest done. Don't you move. Just stay there. Or walk away. That's fine, too. Just don't move in my direction, okay? Thank you very much. Oh, also, every time we pick one up, I think we get a, a tormented voice talking to us. And it says, "White it whispers, leave this place. The relic emits a white hot arc of flame. A memory has been gained. A long, oh, sorry, a lone dark iron dwarf is surrounded by seven corpses. And kneeling before a monolith of flame. Oh, and there's even more. A creature composed entirely of, entirely of flame is the only thing that you can remember seeing. A creature composed entirely of flame is the only thing that you can remember. Oh, never mind. That's the same thing again. So there's different ones, I guess. And they all have different dialogue or something. That one over there is very dangerous because it's in the middle of a mob spawn. But this one we should be able to grab once this guy patrols away a little bit. Here we go. Grab it. See, I could use my, my buffs and stuff, like I could put my, my, my demon armor up there and, my, you know, get my, my summon out and stuff, but I feel like if we get into combat, we die anyway. Although we are only 45 seconds away from resurrection sickness going away, so I guess then life will be much better again. But I still don't want to fight these guys because they're, they're immune to my life drain, guys, and my life drain is my new best friend. Can I get this? No, that's too, that's too greedy, right? That's way too greedy. Yeah, that would be way too greedy. You know what? We'll wait a little bit. We'll summon the Felgarth, get our buffs back up, because in 21 seconds we will have a Resurrection Sickness wearing off. And apparently there's one up here as well, which is really nice and easy to grab. So we've got two more. You will perish here. Your mind fills with visions of chaos and destruction. And then also, you will be punished for this incursion. A symbol of flame radiates from the relic before it crumbles to the earth. And it makes perfect sense to me that we would be you know, punished for doing incursions, guys. That makes perfect sense for me to me. Uh, but I am a bit curious now whether this actual dialogue is going to be in any way followed up upon, you know, with some, some follow-up quest or something where something does happen to us because we've been doing this, or if this is just a, well, I guess a cool little touch of backstory to it. Anyway, we have gotten them all. Now, I can't remember exactly where we bring them back to. Return to Royal Historian Arcasanas, who I think, I think he is in Ironforge. But let's see if we can also do Overmaster Pyron, because it says we need to go to the entrance at the Blackrock Quarry. Where is the Blackrock Quarry? That's the Blackrock Stronghold. That's the Altar of Storms. That's the Mountain. That's the Pillar of Ash. Where is the... Blackrock Quarry. Is it in this map? The Sea of Cinders? Doesn't seem like it. Is it in the dungeon? Like, is it actually in the dungeon? Okay, so I just looked it up. It turns out he is very close to the dungeon entrance. So I guess I'll head there. And we can hopefully grab that guy too and wrap up these two quests. Alright, so this is supposed to be the quarry, and it's called the Grinding Quarry. There's quarry slaves around here. And Overmaster Pyron should be somewhere around here. 
it says at the entrance to the quarry you know i'm not quite sure what the entrance is like is it just a place that i just entered from because that would make sense because he wasn't there or maybe he's on respawn so i'll just like walk up to the dungeon entrance and see if i spot something somewhere this is the masonry so it's probably not here is it masonry or masonry i feel like it's masonry but not entirely sure I don't think he's here. Because this isn't the quarry anymore either. What do I have on me? Your blood is running hot and honor gains from PvP kills are increased by 300%. I don't know if I care about that, but that is kind of cool, I guess. I should try out some PvP at some point, guys. I haven't done any PvP at all in this game. I've just been playing PvE. But I would like to try some PvP because it does sound kind of fun. And I do generally enjoy PvP in games quite a bit. I'm assuming it's just a mob that spawns somewhere around here. Called Overmaster Pyron. Pyron? Pyron, sir. I'm also looking for his corpse, maybe. Because then at least I know he's been slain somewhere around here. And I can... I can pick him up. Well, not pick him up, but I can, I can go and kill him. I can wait for him. Pyron? There is Anvil Rage Overseer here, which isn't exactly Pyron, but... Also seems to be some sort of named mob. I also have no idea if it's like an elite mob or something. It doesn't say it's an elite quest. So I have no idea what to expect from this one. Oh, there he is. Oh, crap. I missed him. He just spawned here. But someone else got him. You know what? I'll, I'll help them kill. Because at least that makes the respawn quicker. But there's no point in me, you know, not helping him out. Oh, oh, he's on to me. Okay. Well, I should be fine, though. I'm t Dude, I'm, I'm tanking for him. Can can at least someone, like, provide a heal or something? Can someone provide a heal to me, please? I'm literally tanking for your group, guys. I got aggro for them. I mean, they have heals, right? I, f I think someone was... I, I think someone was casting a healing ability. Dude, that feels so bad. Wait, is he gonna res me? Oh, dude, this guy is actually... What? What? I, I helped you guys. Why do you feel the need to be so mean? Why am I so fast? Wait, why am I why am I so fast? Is this because the hot blooded stuff? Dude, I'm zooming. Dude, this this feels so good. Like if I could get a mount or something at some point that could get me to this speed, like that would be ridiculous. Anyway, that guy's really strong, and I don't think I'll be able to solo him. So I will have to find a party, at least I've learned that much. So I guess I'll see if I can find a party for him. Oh, my durability is really low right now. I do know that he spawned around here, but I don't think I can solo him. So I really need to find some people to assist me for a bit. So he spawned right about here last time. So I'm assuming he is... Oh, invite mob rep. What? Invite. What is mob rep? What? I'm so confused. I have no idea what this guy is talking about. Oh, he's killing Hydroxian Waterlords, or like he's killing mobs to get reputation? Is that what he's doing? I mean, I'm looking for Overmaster Pyrans. So I don't know why this guy told me to invite him. I'm very confused. I mean, I'm getting reputation, so I guess that's nice. Right, I'm going to leave this party. don't know what this guy is doing. Okay, I'm trying to make a deal with this guy. I'll summon. I'll summon for him. If they can help me with Pyron. I think that's a fair deal. He says, okay. All right. All right, send me the invite. Dude, this guy has some really cool claws. I love the way they look. Here we go. Bring this guy over. There we go. And I guess I'll bring Saruman in here too. All right, now let's see whether Pyron spawns. So we can get this guy done and hope they keep up their end of the bargain. Here he is. There we go. We should be good. Come on. Come on. Just bring the entire party. Here we go. I think this is a fair deal. Keep this guy alive. Make sure he lives. All right, guys. I'm very proud. You know, I think we've made a, a worthy transaction. I, I, I got aggro, right, initially? Because he's like... he's. Oh, yeah. The color doesn't matter, right? The color is just it's the aggro thing. Wait. Did I not get it? Wait, I... Uh... What? Overmaster Pyron slain, but I, I was the one who aggroed him, right? Well, no, I still don't have him. Well, that is unfortunate. 
All right, what we can try and do is summon the Void Walker and just give him like five or so seconds to to completely get the aggro. And then hopefully by that time, I can start unloading on him and, and he can keep aggro. Hope that works. Because maybe we can solo this guy. We will give it a shot. Because for some reason, I didn't get it. I do hope those mobs move away though, because if I want to send Togok in there and the guy spawns over here, it's going to aggro those mobs as well. I could try and target him myself and bring him over here, but that would mean I can't have him, I can't have Togok build up his, um, his aggro. So it might be a bit annoying to actually get him properly. I wonder if I can just kite him around forever. Like if he's slow enough, I can just keep running and running and running. Because I do have pretty good sustain on this build right now. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'll have to bring him towards me. Now Togor can go. Hopefully he can get his aggro. Yeah, okay. Give him some time. Give him some time. Okay, now we put this stuff on him. Togor, please keep some form of aggro. Please, uh, can I fear him? Can I fear him? Please come on, fear, fear. This fear, other fear. Any of the fears? He's immune to fears. Oh god, okay. Uh, health stone. Leech life. Keep draining. Yeah, this does nothing. And I, I want you to know I have maximum upgraded... Um, torment, I think the ability was called on him. Ah, that shit just doesn't do anything. Torgok is just so fucking useless. <sighs> Torgok. Torgok, my man. You, you, you don't do anything. I feel like I gave him time to build up his his taunt before I engaged him. Maybe I should have slow engaged, like, you know, like slowly chipped away at him while Togok was, uh, you know, keeping aggro. But then I think Togok would have died before I, you know, got him to like 75%, which wouldn't have worked either. So I don't know. I don't think Togok works, at least not with the power level of a, a season discovery. Like I feel and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like my aggro generation or my threat generation is just much higher in classic, which is why I can't keep aggro on him. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I feel like I gave him enough time. And if I have to wait, you know, five seconds for every mob, especially in the open world, like for difficult stuff, I don't mind doing that. But if I had to wait like five to ten seconds for every mob in the open world, I would be much better off running anything else. All right, we're going to skip that quest for now. And we're at least going to go hand in the Smoldering Ruins of Thorazen because... Why not? Oh, also, apparently, my uh, <laughs> my guy, like, showcasing what parts of my armor are damaged is overlapping with my health bar, so I, I did not want it to be there. But I hadn't noticed until it popped up, because I guess we haven't been in a position where we have so much damage stuff on us. But it looks kind of funny. All right, here we go. Royal Historian Arcasonus. We have returned. Greetings, EK. Have you come to learn of the history of Ironforge? Well, I mean, we got some whispers that were speaking to us oh my this information explains quite a lot about thorazen there is much more to learn so we get the ring of the aristocrat which i i don't know if it's better than either of the ones i have right now i'm not sure i feel like it's not all right and now king magni bronzebeard has another quest for us and this might be one of the quests for the dungeon not quite sure you have been to the smoldering ruins of Thorazen. Did you happen to run into a pitfall lout named Karen Mighthammer? The dwarf that was supposedly watching over my baby girl. The king sobs. And now she's gone, EK. I have had my men turn the steps upside down. The only clue that I have as to the whereabouts of my daughter is that she may be inside the depths. For all I know, she could be dead. Karen is supposedly being held prisoner there. Find him. I want answers. So I travel to Blackrock Depths and find Karen Mighthammer. The king mentioned that Karen was being held prisoner there. Perhaps you should try looking for a prison. Oh, I think we already saw that person in one of the prison cells, but I just didn't have the quest for it. And I was even asking, hey, probably there's going to be a quest for it or something, right? And I think that is indeed the case. So we accept the quest. And now we have Karen Mighthammer, another quest in the Blackrock Depths list. I kind of wish we would have also completed over Master Pyron, but we couldn't really find a party for it in either the, the LFG chat, the... Uh, well, local chat or the guild chat. So that was a bit unfortunate. So guys, next up, we have a bit of a plan. What I am going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a quest that requires us to be level 14. Yes, 14. We are level 53. 
we could have done this quest a long time ago but i haven't really learned about this quest until pretty recently and i do want to pick it up before we are max level so what is this question you may be wondering well it is the quest to get the cozy sleeping bag i'll talk more about what it does when we do eventually get it but the quest for alliance does start in westfall a map we haven't been to in quite some time so i'm gonna head there and i'll see you guys when we can continue this quest all right so for the first time in quite a while i decided to use the tom tom waypoint system you know we've tested this once in I believe it was in Ironforge to pick up some quests for Nomergon or something. So the cool thing about this is that the arrow, when we are going in the correct direction, it shows us green. When we're facing away from it, it turns yellow, it turns orange. And if we go the complete opposite way, it's turning red. So you can very easily see whether you're going in the right direction. Now, obviously, the arrow also suggests which direction you have to go towards. So it's not really required, but it's a nice little touch. So over here somewhere... We should be able to find a note and yeah, I guess it's here at the burned out remains. So it works perfectly fine. We open the burned out remains and we will find a note of some kind. The faint radiance of the embers darkening, you stumble across the remnants of a recent fire. Amidst the scattered provisions, you discover a blistered note. Not all that burns is lost. Find the twin land. Find the place. Child remains the note serve as your only guide. So... The cool thing about these kind of things, of course, is that for people who just stumbled upon this initially, because I think this is Season of Discovery only stuff as far as I'm aware. So it's a... Um, oh, it's, it's level 40 quest, is it? I thought it was level 14. I think it's level 14. Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. So uh, yeah, we have this quest now and like you would not know where to go. Like not all that burns is lost. Find the twin land, find the place. And the place we have to go to, by the way, is the Barrens. And we have to go to the burnt out remains in the Barrens as well. So I guess the twin place is talking about another like burnt out remains kind of place. But Unless you, you saw what the other one was, you wouldn't have figured it out. But the kind of cool thing about those kind of things, of course, is that you you get into the situation, which I'm assuming happened, where, you know, one person's like, hey, I found this place with this note. Does anyone else know what's going on? And then someone else was like, yeah, I found this too, but I found it in the Barrens. And then, you know, you start adding, you know, one plus one is two, and you're like, oh, wait a second, but twin or the place, same object. That's cool, you know, I like when I'm assuming this was solved... I mean, there's always going to be people who happen to run into both. Yeah, definitely. But there's also going to be a lot of people who just kind of learn about the fact that there's one from another friend. Unless, of course, this stuff got leaked or something like way earlier and there were guides on day one, which, I mean, wouldn't surprise me in the modern age. So let's go to the Barons. He says with disgust in his face. Can I just point out how happy I am to see that it says two kilometers and an X amount of meters? None of that miles or feet or inches bullshit and i know those aren't units of distance i'm aware but you know kilometers they just make stuff so much easier so if there's any americans here watching guys the metric system it is just it's it's a beauty small side tangent here but it should be so so weird you know to be using the american units of measurement like knowing they are inferior because i i think most people who live in america like they they know their system is is worse you know, like they know their their system is logically inferior to the metric systems but you know you grew up with a certain system you know a certain system everyone around you uses a certain system so there's no point in you deviating from that system and you know sw swapping over to metric when everyone else does it as well so you you know you you've been indoctrinated into the uh the non-metric system is there even a name for it you know because i know it's like the metric system and then there's like the american system i guess but it's weird because you can't just swap over really not fully at least so i guess you can use both systems but then you might confuse people also there's a pretty long run we have to go all the way down here but it's fine because i can i can just you know keep talking and upset americans around here i'm sorry guys i'm sorry i really am that you have to use that system of course that is what i'm sorry for there's even a timer at the bottom of the TomTom -tom waypoint system 
I wonder if that is also taking into account our current traveling speed. Like if it takes into account my character's current traveling speed with its maximum speed in mind and then extrapolates the distance, um, well, the, the time uh, it takes us to cross that distance. I'm guessing that's what's happening, but I don't know if it actually takes into account my actual character speed or if it just takes into account base walking speed. I guess I will be able to find that information about the, uh, the add-on somewhere, but I'm too lazy to go and search because I have barons to cross. All right, and here should be the second... Oh, discovered field of giants. We actually hadn't been here yet, I guess. That's kind of cool. So I take it we can also interact with something around here. This should be the correct spot, but nothing seems interactable. I am supposed to be able to interact with something around here, with the burned out remains, but I can't seem to interact with anything here. Oh, wait, there's like a little pile here. Ah, I can open this. As you stumble upon the remnants of yet another charred corpse, your gaze falls upon a message secured to a wooden plank. So we get a swiftness potion, increases run speed by up to by 50% for 15 seconds, and a strong troll's blood potion, which generates 6 health every 5 seconds for 1 hour. Do we care about that? I mean, it's not, it's not nothing, I guess. The note begins. Mission said they were both making deliveries for new plague new plague looks like simple apothecary accidents to me find my cozy spot in the mountains between the barons and desolus if you want a safe place to talk you t you tear the note from the plank and read the scrolled writing all right so um a cozy place between the barons and desolus well uh, desolus so that would put us up into i mean i reckon that is either either mulgor but didn't he say something about the mountains? Didn't we talk about the mountains here and stepping stones? Yeah, and the mountains between the barons and desolate. So the mountains between that would be the stone teller mountains. So somewhere in here, we're going to have to find a cozy place. Now, I do know where to go next because every time I finish off the, the previous one, I will then read the next line. Because the way I like doing this is I like to try and figure out where to go approximately myself first and then when i have discovered that at that point i will look up the guide and see if i was somewhere close i don't know exactly where in the mountains is going to be i will let the gps do that for me but the map itself was correct ah yes the lush water oasis a place we hadn't been to yet but definitely my favorite part of the barrens why because it looks nothing like the barrens also, the Wailing Caverns is over here as well, which I do believe is the Horde equivalent of the Dead Mines, which is like the first dungeon you would uh, you would do. And I'm thinking about maybe sometime soon soloing a bunch of like lower level dungeons, like we soloed the um, wow, I'm blanking on the name, but the uh, the one in uh, in Silver Pine, the um, the one with the werewolves, you know, the Worgen. You guys know which one I'm talking about. So yeah, I, I'm thinking about maybe going and soloing a couple of those dungeons just so we get to experience them. I was also thinking maybe like rolling a secondary character and going through them with that character and maybe even adding them to the series, but I'll see what I decide on doing. Because leveling is fairly quick in the earlier levels, so I wouldn't be opposed to trying to get level 15 and just doing a horde, like, you know, kill of the dungeon. So uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll think about what I'm going to be doing there. But by the time you're watching this video, I will probably have already made my decision. Okay, so I'm really curious how strong these guards are. They're level 40. So what I will do is I will make myself a soul stone so I can revive myself if stuff goes wrong. I will use the soul stone. I will summon my fell guard. Prepare myself with some demon armor after that. And we're going to try and take on the guards because I'm just really curious how strong these guards actually are. And if we can, you know, get revenge. Or if we're going to get absolutely blasted, which definitely is a possibility as well. All right, let us take on this guard. Let's see how strong he is. What do I have here? Imp on the mission. Oh yeah, I said my uh, my imp on the, on the mission. All right. Uh, well, he seems very much doable. Yeah, we can actually take out the guards now. Oh, that makes me feel happy. You know, die, Baron Guard. Baron Guard, you stand no chance versus me. Here we go. Bam, boop, you're done. No loot for you. Well, too bad. Oh, that felt so good. That felt so rewarding. 
now I don't mind running through them. You know, if you want to aggro me, I will murder you. See, you don't even aggro me anymore because you're scared of me. Because you saw your friend die, yes? Alright, so the GPS stopped a little bit early. And there was a secondary set of coordinates in there. But it said travel the mountain pass. And this feels like the mountain pass. So at least we get a little bit of semi-blind exploration. But I'm expecting to run into a tent or something pretty soon. And there we go. There is a tent. There is a cozy place. And we probably have something to do here for the quest. Let's see. Um, there's a note or something up here as well. Can I interact with anything? Here we go. What is this? Pocket letter. Black country adventurers and mercenaries alike undoubtedly make camp here. The corner of a note flapping in the breeze catches your eye and you reach for it. We can get a mining pick or a farmer's shovel. Uh, sure, let's pick up a mining pick. We get flint and tinder, simple wood and a sturdy lunchbox. It's for a slot bag. That would not have been bad. That's quite nice, actually. Not so Well, not so bad, eh? There we go. Since you're reading this, it means my stash is still there. Take a hundred paces due north and don't break your ankles going down the steep cliffside. There should be enough to keep you going. So, a hundred paces due north. Find what awaits you. Alright, that's kind of cool. Like we've got like this, this shovel in the in the earth as well, which is kind of cool. Anything else going on here? Probably not, right? This is just the one quest. What do I have all these things for though? Like, si why, why do I have simple wood? Why do I have a mining pick? Is the game trying to tell me to do something? Okay, so the guide is telling me that I can click the campfire to get something started. But I'm assuming this is the campfire, right? And I'm clicking it. I'm clicking it a lot. But nothing seems to click. This isn't a campfire. This is a bucket. Or like a hole in the ground. Campfire, can you please allow me to do something with you? It says, click the fire pit in the middle of the camp to start the rekindle quest. It's an optional quest. But I, I can't seem to do it. Okay, whatever. Uh, it's probably not too important. So we'll just continue onward. It said go north. So north we shall go. Oh boy, the quest wants me to be up somewhere, I think. I think I just went way too far down. Whoops. Is there any path back up, I wonder? I hope so. Without having to go all the way back. It's not super far, though. Oh, maybe... Maybe this is a, uh, a passageway to where I need to go to. Oh, a cave. Oh, hello. Oh, but it's not its not in here. I thought I was going to have to go in here, but I guess that's not... Okay. Well, sure. I guess we'll just have to rerun the path and hope we can now find where we need to go. So how exactly do we go north from here? Like We're supposed to go in that direction. Do I walk back a little bit? Because I think this way I can only go down. So I guess I'll walk back a little bit and see if I can find an easier way to climb up. Oh, wait, there's a mound of dirt here on the floor. But, oh, uh, okay, so the waypoint was just... I was being memes, guys. The, the waypoint was telling me it's 93 meters that way, but it's just over here. You pull a messenger bag out of the ground. Stuffed in with the supplies is a dirty parchment. Lots more random stuff that I don't think we really need. Uh, I guess I can sell the Moontide rifle complete. Wet job. Always like to keep a reserve stash nearby in a chance I've got to flee in a hurry. The face of this mountainside is so beautiful you might say it was carved from the waterfalls of time. That's the eagle's nest. That's what you're looking for. What? Is waterfalls a reference? So, I mean, it's talking about um, a wet job. So I would assume it's talking about the wetlands. But it's also talking about a waterfall. And I don't think there's a waterfall in the wetlands. Don't know. Don't know. Dusting of a messenger bag emerging from the soil. You find a parchment nestled among the supplies. All right. Let's see where we do have to go. Okay, we have to go to Logmodan, and we have to go to the Stone Rod Dam. Okay, well, haven't been there in a while. All right, we are on the dam. I was half expecting to be dismounted here because I wasn't sure how this was going to work. Like, I was kind of expecting this to be considered to be indoor, but I guess it's not. 
uh, we're almost there already it is just around here somewhere i think it's down there where we just hop down real quick and we grab the thing we want to grab here we go what is here whoa okay sure cool wait every time i click i zoom what is going on what is what is going on wait is that because it's like a whoa what is this long side increases vision until you move so we can grab this thing and then we like oh don't know what the purpose for this is but this is kind of cool i guess do we interact with this stuff then Ah, here we go. Carved figurine. Wet job. Dwarven engineering, always a marvel. We get a, a hickory pipe, which we can auction for two gold a bit, which sounds pretty good. And Rumsey Rum Light. Increases stamina by five for 15 minutes. And gets you drunk to boot. Well, that's perfect. All right, complete quest. Eagle's Fist. You find a carefully folded letter inside the toolbox. Imagining a voice speaking, you read from here. With the right tools, you call the shots. Great place to launch a parachute glider. My loyalty to the eagle and fist requires distance in order to serve them best. This barricade had, has had better days, like the old kingdom it once defended, but I'll never abandon it. Water spray dampens the air. The view is incredible. What? I mean, I can, I can look. That much I've learned. I can look. What do I want to look for? Eagle's Fist. This quest is so cryptic. I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess, in a way, but... Also, I hadn't seen these things, but this actually is really cool. So, these are like dwarves, I think. And they are, like, spouting the water out instead of just being pipes. Like, it's just... It's going from over there, like, the dam is letting something through and uh, flowing down here. And I guess that flows all the way over into the wetlands. Yeah, that works. Like, you know, it falls down and it flows into here, into the wetlands, and it flows back into the sea. Okay, and then I guess it's like it rains back down here or something, and it just keeps going that way. Cool. Um, Yeah, the description makes no sense to me, but I guess I'll look up where to go next. We have to go to Hillspread Foothills. There was no way I would have ever uncovered that, but I kind of want to just see if I can go that way into the wetlands because that's kind of cool i guess because i don't think there's a way we can climb back up oh boy wait that worked that worked wait we're in are we in the wetlands now we're in the wetlands now that's a really cool way to get into the wetlands guys it's so tranquil around here as well you know with the setting sun over there and uh the bird sounds and apparently someone flying next to me now I wish I had a water mount. Skimmer, where are you at? We have made it to the edge. And where do we end up? Well, in another whole bunch of water, I think. Here we go. We keep dropping down. <laughs> this is a cool way to enter the zone. Yeah, there we go. Another one. Oh boy, am I dead? I did not really drop properly. But I'm fine with this because... I am looking to get to the flight path anyway. So I'll just mount up here, walk over to the flight path in Manitou Harbor, and then make my way over to the Hillspread Foothills by flight path. And then I think the final stuff actually happens there, and then we should be able to get the sleeping bag. All right, so it's supposedly somewhere around here at Thorodin's Wall. Um, is it up somehow? I don't think I can climb up, so... This card looks like... Like I would be able to use this cart or something. I'm not sure this is intended. Okay, let me let me dismount actually. Can I can I climb up? Is that possible? Whoa, whoa. Don't know if I have to, but like this car just looks like it's perfectly placed for me to climb on. Whoa. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on, we're going somewhere. No, what? Oh, it's so floaty. Am I supposed to climb up here? I mean, I kind of want to now, even if I don't have to. The hitboxes for this thing are so weird. Okay, let me remove this waypoint. There we go. Oh my. You can clearly tell that this game was not designed to be built 
around jumping puzzles like it's just not designed for it oh come on please just jump why won't you jump there we go there we go we did it do i have to be up here i mean this looks like it's climbable as well this is like the first time in this game where i'm like did i just discover a jumping puzzle still not sure if i have to go up here i just know i need to be around here oh this works oh oh boy okay jump to the middle one dude jump Fine, it's fine. Just step like a little bit over here. Jump. Up here. Jump. Now just walk. Where are we going? I mean, this is where you tell me like there's like an easy like ramp up there or something you can just use to get up here. But, you know, instead I choose to go the very long convoluted way. But we are up here. Kind of cool to be up here, actually. What is this? All kinds of books beyond the... Ooh. Is there lots of stuff here? Okay, actually, this is this is short. Beyond the Dark Puzzle. This sounds super cool. Okay. Only a few months after Nedegaard's completion, the energy of the Dark Portal coalesced and opened up a new gateway to Trainor. Oh, is that what is that what uh, Warlord of Draenor is about? The remaining Orc clans, under, under the leadership of the Elder Shaman Ner'zhul, charged forth into Azeroth once again, intent on stealing a number of magical artifacts that would increase uh, Ner'zhul's power. The Orcs planned to open up new portals in Draenor that would allow them to escape their doomed Red World forever. Yeah, so the Orcs came from a different world, right? Which I think I learned by watching the, uh, the, um, the live-action movie way back in the day that... I think got pretty bad reviews. You know, I personally, I quite enjoyed it because I wasn't a big fan of me, which is like, hey, it's 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 like an all right fantasy movie, but I can imagine that probably butchers a lot of the lore. But hey, I, I learned something from it, so that's cool. Convinced that Ner'zhul was planning a new offensive against the Alliance, King Taranas of Lord Aaron sent his armies into Draenor to end the Orcish threat once and for all. Led by Khadgar and General Turaylon. Guys, there's like a baby crying like very loudly somewhere outside and it's just it's really annoying anyway the alliance forces clashed with the orcs across the burning landscape even with the aid of the elven ranger aleria the dwarf kurdran and the veteran soldier danev none of them i've ever heard about katgar was unable to prevent the nerazul from opening his portals to other worlds the tremendous magical storms caused by the portals converging energies began to tear the ravaged world apart Nerzul, followed only by his most trusted servants, managed to escape through one of the portals at Khadgar fought desperately to return his comrades to Azeroth, realizing that they would be trapped on the dying world. Khadgar and his, his companions selflessly decided to destroy the Dark Portal so that Azeroth would not be harmed by Traynor's violent destruction. But then why is the portal still out there? Is it like inactive? Because it looked quite active to me. By all accounts, the heroes were successful in destroying the portal and saving Azeroth. But whether or not they escaped the death throes of Draenor remains to be seen. Yeah, this one's quite long as well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip on, on some of these books, guys. I, I would love to read them, but it just takes a lot of time. And, you know, the series is already extremely long the way it is. Wait, am I supposed to grab something around here? An orange tabby. Some shoes. Oh, another one of those long rifles. Okay, so we can once again peek into the distance if we want to. Not sure I do want to, but I have the ability to do so. Oh, what is this? We can open something. Is this for the quest? Or is this something else? No, that was just some cheese. Oh, wait. This thing I can interact with. Oh, there we go. Messenger bag. A campfire is newly fed with wood, but signs of a quick departure are evident. So, I have decided to take my work back on the ground, to stop it falling into the wrong hands. The paper is torn just large enough to fit the message. You aren't sure if these are the last words you'll read from the author, or if they're a clue to the next hideout. An inadequate secured sleeping bag is unrolling itself onto your feet. Is it this thing? I mean, there's like parchments in there and stuff. Uh, whoever was here, you just missed them. Uh, this must be the place. Oh, this is it. Heavy canvas is rolled over assorted equipment. You help yourself to the pack. Alright, so we get a cozy sleeping bag. So what does it do, guys? We haven't talked about this yet, so let's let's talk about it for a little bit. It says, Unfurl a sleeping bag. Resting inside for at least one minute will provide a bonus to experience earned, stacking up to three times. Old, but still good. Also, we get some student fodder, which says, Eat a handful and make up for lost time on the trail. 
So we complete the quest. And I am pretty sure with this thing, I can just unroll it wherever I want. And I can log out wherever I want and I will still get rested experience. So I don't have to look for an inn. I can just like unroll this thing. Sleep in it. And I think if I go to log out now, yeah, it's going to like interlog me out. And I don't have like a 20 second timer. And it's also giving me like the Z uh, stuff. So yeah, it's still here. Cool. Oh, it's a two hour cooldown as well. Okay, well, I didn't take that into account, but that is fine. Uh, the thing is off as well now. I mean, I don't really care too much about it right now. And also, uh, we got eight student fodder. And from my understanding, these just give me rested experience. Now, I don't know how much they're going to give me, but I am at 110% and we can get to 150%. So let me just try one and see if it pushes me up. That just gave me 20% rested experience, guys. So this means that... Oh, I, so you can't just spam these. So I can't just go, you know, consume seven more of them, get 140%. But I guess I can just pop these as long as I'm, you know feeling like I can actively use the experience but I wanted to get this quest done because it's one of those things that you know I, I don't want to do when I'm level capped because then the experience has no purpose anymore so at least now for the last well six and a little bit levels we'll uh, we'll have the sleeping bag